we are awakening to the power of our consciousness that allows us to think freely, to love freely, to discover truth and to manifest reality, to co-create reality. And that is huge. Welcome everybody to our energy update for week two, that is the 7th to 14th, January 22. My name is Yona Brindes. I'm an energy healer, energy coach, and energy therapist, helping people through the transitions of life. And those transitions are plenty right now. So together in these weekly forecasts and energy tips, as well as the monthly forecasts and discussions and workshops and courses and programs that I do, I help people from all over the world to deal with these changing paradigms, these changing ways of perceiving reality. And I think it's safe to say that right now in this, well, a bifurcated perception of truth, of reality, yeah, like a split way of of perceiving what is going on, yeah, we are extremely challenged. Some of us are a little more sensitive to these things, to these collective energies, which are basically the combination of larger cycles, planetary influences, influences that we're not fully aware of, and of course, all of the emotions, thoughts, and actions that we put out into the world as human collective. So these collective energies actually function like background noises, and there's always a little bit of challenge in that. And finding reality in the midst of this split perception of truth is the biggest challenge right now. Yes, some call it mass formation psychosis and some call it conspiracy theory, depending on which vantage point you choose to take in. Why do we humans take on vantage points? Because we experience a high degree of pain, cognitive dissonance, through not being able to make sense of things, through not being able to have a proper contextualization of what is going on. And whenever we cannot really fully understand what we're experiencing, something dangerous happens. Our ego steps in and it wants solutions. It wants culprits. It wants causation it wants simple solutions okay and this is basically the reason why our time is so bifurcated yeah that's just a sophisticated way of saying split realities all right it's because the human nature has two different tendencies one would be to find a common enemy and to blame it all on that, you know, group of people or, you know, a certain type of causation. And the other part of our human nature or tendency is to wanting to escape reality and to wanting to find a better reality elsewhere. I talked about this um, roughly a year ago or a year and a half ago in one of the truth talks. I'm going to try to find that recording for you where I go a little deeper into this, why that is and why our ego does that. It's normal. It's human. But there is a problem with this because those of us who are spiritually inclined and who want to find more purpose in life and fulfillment, we are recognizing that there is no real solution in either of these extremes. Yeah. So we have been prompted most likely by something that I call our true self. It's something like an inner truth that comes forward that interacts with us unconsciously and that kind of points us, that gives us pointers or, or gives us cues, it gives us breadcrumbs to follow 
and it's intertwined with karma too. So there's there's a personal karma that I have that I've formed throughout my, you know, the quality of all my choices in life. And then there's the family karma and the karma of my nation. And then there's the collective karma that all, you know, they all work together, you know, basically determining the collective experience. But there's something that many of us have noticed, and that is that there is a way to step into a state of being, a state of consciousness, which are not the same, but that distinction isn't really important right now. There is a way through shifting our level of consciousness to not having to do this, not having to divide reality into these two polar opposites, into these conflicting um, fa factions, if you will, within ourselves. There is a way to defragment ourselves and to go into an inner place of peace, of union with what we're experiencing. And this is typically sort of what comes in through spiritual teaching. So there is a huge tendency right now to go and seek answers in the spiritual realm, which is a healthy notion, because if you think about it in the past 50 years or so, um, the spiritual uh, component, yeah, what was uh, sort of named mindfulness uh, in psychology, has gotten a little bit into the background, and if it hadn't, then it got a little transfigured through New Age. So there's there's problems there as well. Yeah, there's a a, a part of this uh, these New Age momentums of the past have also contributed to the the extremes of seeking um, alternative realities and and the the outcroppings of of conspiracy theories, if you will. There's a middle ground here, guys, and this is, I suppose, you know, what you are seeking when you watch my videos or when you come to my workshops or participate in my courses or I have sessions with me, namely the the middle way, the centered way, where you find a way, learn new ways to connect with your inner truth, to connect with what is true to you, what you truly need, what you truly want, and what brings you into true purpose and fulfillment. This is basically our journey here, and I'm grateful for each and every one of you listening, thinking, contemplating about how I offer to contextualize what we are experiencing. So this next week, week two of 2022, is called Camelot. And that's something that some of you may actually understand based on spiritual writings of a spiritual teacher who isn't among us anymore, Stuart Wilde. He talked about building Camelot. And I want to go into this here today because that's relevant for the energies of this coming week. I gave you the roundup on what our journey is about and why we are struggling with certain things and how we can find new ways. This next week brings in a wonderful support for us stepping into this kind of clarity that I just sort of modeled for you here. Yeah, to, to really sit back, contemplate, Review what we have learned in the past years, particularly in the last year, year and a half, where so many of our values and our priorities in life have shifted. Yeah. And what didn't go that well, yeah, where we maybe blindly trusted in something or where we... Um, sucked up things yeah that are now frustrating us yeah this is the next week that brings this forward to us and it doesn't have to be negative it doesn't have to be <laughs> depressive um, we also don't have to go into you know going up on the barricades and 
revolting against what is, what is needed now is the deeper contemplation and the integration of all these things that we have learned so that we can make course corrections for our own life. It's kind of like a check in point. It's about finding new ways. Yeah, many of you have already done the first step, maybe. Many of you have decided to invest in themselves and to learn more about their own nature, to get to know themselves better. That's a fundamental prerequisite yeah, to making better, making healthier choices for the future. But there's also this internalization process that's, that has to happen. And that one will lead us through recognizing how we have been coping in the past. How have I dealt with my frustration? How have I dealt with my anger? How have I dealt with feeling like a victim? How have I dealt with feeling powerless? How have I dealt in the past, which I want to say, or which I want to call coping rather than dealing with, because the reason why I'm so upbeat about this next week is that this internalization process allows us to become more clear about which part of our actions, choices, uh, attitudes to life were actually based on dealing with things yeah, and coming up with resolutions and which of these things we're more like coping and, you know, experiencing ourselves with great intentions, wonderful insights, but no actual change. This is the second week of January. Yeah? Becoming aware of the difference between an intention and a resolution. And yet it yeah, yes, it's still a good time to do a vision board. It's still a good time to do something that I want to call, I don't want to call it goal setting, but more so like a recalibration of your attitude to it life, of your life view. And the reason why I want to point your attention to the word Camelot and the reference that I made to the teachings of Stuart Wilde is because there was something that he mentioned in the late 80s and early 90s that had to do obviously with his visionary abilities and he said that what we are going to do here in the future is that we're going to build Camelots, we're going to build these places in the world that are basically higher in vibration than the majority of the surrounding reality and therefore begin to operate on an independent, self-sustaining and non-offensive sort of inclusive way. In other words, he gave the, the, the mindset that this dealing with the paradigm change yeah, into understanding ourselves as energetic beings and learning how to deal with this can lead to us becoming aware that we can actually all build our own safe place. We can all build our own, if you will, yeah, sort of parallel structure. We can exist if we don't go into resistance with what is, if we recognize truth from within, yeah, without feeling the need to go against or to, you know, belong to any particular faction, yeah, or to demonize or to vilify others, but to go into the place of inner truth and bring or embody this, bring this into manifestation for ourselves and for others. Basically providing a space in which we, due to the power of our own consciousness, our own insight, our own 
internalized version of truth, come to peace with these changing paradigms around us, with the chaos around us. And that requires us to move into a higher level of consciousness. It requires us to let go of our own ego's notion to wanting to belong to a certain faction, to to having this um, view that, you know, things are either for me or against me. You know, if you're not on my team, then you've got to be on the other team. It also helps us to address these these conflictions between seeing ourselves as a 3D material being only and seeing ourselves as a spirit being only, yeah, which is more or less yeah, the, the spiritual way of, of classifying or characterizing these two factions. Okay, so you have the one group that is uh, based on material values only, yeah, and basically excludes the existence of a soul of the true human nature. And you got the other faction that does the same thing just the other way around. Yeah, basically excludes the necessity for pragmatism for certain aspects of living together, governance, technology, you know, and uh, some of the material necessities that are needed to run a collective, yeah, and uh, just sort of wants um, the world to be a, a spiritual place only. Both of these extremes lead to polarization and conflict within, and conflict within always leads to conflict, conflict on the outside. In other words, the outer world, the world that we are seeing here as sort of our collective, be it economically, financially, socially, spiritually, um, and so forth, physically, is steering into higher degrees of confliction and therefore, you know, something that we could probably call warlike um, phase. But for the first time in human history, due to the enormously increasing number of people who are beginning to feel that they are both, that they can be both. They can be a 3D being yeah, and um, a spirit being at the same time, yeah? Basically recognizing that we are not a body with a soul, but a soul with a body, and that both are here and now uh, that need to be dealt with, all right? That due to that higher understanding of what life is, namely to bring our spiritual understanding into 3D, yeah, we can recognize that we don't have to go into either extremes. We find this peace, we find inclusion, we find emancipation, freedom, truth, and love within our own center. And as you know, this is basically the teaching of heart awareness, loving attention, empathy, compassion, and forgiveness. So one of these, these fundamental human values that no matter what race, what spiritual belief, what nationality, what political opinion we have, is the same in all of us. Yeah, we all want love, we all want truth, and we all want freedom. And the conscious manifestation of that means that we have to learn how to overcome our ego's notion, wanting to classify everything into this sort of binary system dark and light, good and bad, black and white. Yeah. So finding new ways always leads the conscious observer into the, the middle, into the center. In some spiritual teachings, you will hear this as 
or you'll hear this uh, called sacred heart, Christ consciousness, divine consciousness. Yeah, many, many different ways to call this. But fundamentally, it's the awakening of humanity to the power of their own consciousness. So the reason why I said that this is the first time in the history of humankind is that up until now, at least from what we know, there is a possibility that there were civilizations that are not recorded, or at least not as far as we know today, that had already higher levels of development, higher levels of consciousness development that chose uh, to be invisible for us. But it is very clearly documented here in this recorded history that we are, or this version of recorded history that we are dealing with, that up until now, yeah, the last six to ten, eight thousand years, we have been externalizing our power to some kind of outside authority. And this is basically this big paradigm shift that is happening here. We are forming an internal authority. We are awakening to the power of our consciousness that allows us to think freely, to love freely, to discover truth and to manifest reality, to co-create reality. And that is huge. And this will take decades for us to realize, to actualize. Yeah? And you guys are one of the forerunners. And depending on what age group you have had to deal with, you know, a lot of the the trauma, so to speak, of the Cassandra syndrome, really, if you will, yeah, the unheard prophet, all right, just like me. So my predictions are always kind of 20 years ahead of time. And so right now I am offering this service to assist people in this transition into this new awareness. Yeah, but in actuality, what I am already preparing for is what's going to happen in the next 20 years from now, when we will find that the power of co-creating reality must mean that we have to find smaller communities, communities that are based on these human values, on you know, wanting to collaborate, wanting to live in symbiosis, wanting to synergetically co-create in the truest form. And that requires us to build places. That requires us to, well, reinvent or invent new structures, spaces can do this and I've already mentioned this in the forecast for 22 and 23 that we will gravitate to things such as room and space sharing, resource sharing yeah, and more inclusive say institutions such as schools and businesses they will become more altruistic, more woven into our collectives and those collectives will become smaller yeah because we realize that a large population such as the one that we have 7.8 billion i think give or take is very difficult to govern unless we allow an outer authority do this. That's basically the globalist view. The globalist view is that the only way to govern a planet with that much population is to control it from the outside. And this new paradigm, this new 
consciousness that is developing in all of us here is allowing us to discover new ways of that. Basically, smaller collectives. Yeah, and obviously this takes time for society to shift in this way. This month of January is all dedicated to developing these new values and priorities that come with that. Yeah, and for us as individuals, it means that we now need to look a little further ahead. Yeah, as the COVID uh, situation, the, the pandemic, yeah, that has uh, more or less influenced our, our present moment awareness and all the outer things here in the last nearly two years is coming to an end. Right, we need to look forward. We need to move forward, and that is supported right now. I know that some of you are into astrology, and I know that there is going to be a Mercury retrograde here coming up. This is not something you need to worry about. A Mercury retrogrades have a bit of a bad reputation. You know, you say don't make big decisions in that time. Don't sign any contracts. In a retro case, it's usually like a three-week period. Yeah. But the truth is, yeah, retrogrades are always constellations in which we are supposed to review, refine, yeah, and correct if needed. Yeah, it's where we need to check in. So this will come in at the end of this next week, and that's a positive thing to look forward to because it allows us to make changes. Yeah, so don't take this literal, this retrograde um, phase here that we're looking at is one that allows us to better prioritize, to become more clear about our true needs and our true wants. And my tip, again, is to bring this into something like a vision board, into a visualization for yourself, not in this sort of dreamy, hopey way, you know, with the ideals of how you, you know, project your future, but in a way that really refers to your deeper inner feeling of how you want to feel like in the future, how you want to experience life in like, say, 20 years from now. This is the time here, this, this next week, guys. So. There is a lot going on and a lot of support. And if you believe it or not, a lot of fortitude here for these next three and a half months. Yeah, so if you can step into this actively with a full consciousness, you can experience yourself manifesting miracles. But it does require you to step into truth. And truth often comes with uncomfortable truths, with these hidden truths, hidden desires, hidden payoffs. Yes, so that's the price for becoming able to consciously manifest miracles. You're gonna have to work with your inner darkness with your shadow aspects and let me assure you as a healer and coach and therapist that this is probably the most liberating thing you can ever do in your life is to actually step into that what are my hidden payoffs here why am i truly doing this What's in it for me? My ego would not recommend anything to me unless there was something in it for it. And for the most part, you'll discover that it's actually something that has to do with trauma, with pain, with not wanting to experience or feel something. And that something is buried in your past. Now, let's say you grew up with very little opportunities, poverty, and so forth. 
one of your unconscious goals in life will be to never ever experience poverty again. And this might pull you into, this is karmic, it might karmically pull you into focusing on money, you know, and material wealth a little bit too much. Some of you grew up with unloving parents, with parents that weren't emotionally available to you. So you don't want to experience this again. Maybe you have become a parent yourself and now your priority, your drive in life is to provide everything for others emotionally and get sort of burned out in the process. That's a hidden darkness as well. Yeah, the resentments and frustrations that occur through trying to just be there for others and neglect our own needs. And some of you may have experienced some kind of victimization or powerlessness as a child. And because of that, because of you not wanting to ever experience that again, yeah, you seek power and control in your life. Those are all part of your shadow and there is nothing to be ashamed of or feel guilty for when you step into this clarity with yourself where you can see that oh my god all my life everything that I did was just based on not wanting to feel a certain feeling and here I am frustrated and I'm feeling it this is an opportunity this is a cue for me to step up and try new things so that's the wonderful healing opportunity here in these next weeks, really. But the seed for that, the cue for that is coming in in this second week of January. So pay attention to that and again, you know, work on refining things. Maybe go back to your true needs and true wants list one more time and formulate this into how you want your future Camelot to be. The space in which you can feel safe, in which all your needs are met. The place that might even provide safe space for others or a beacon of light that might offer healing to others. Yeah. Abundance and beauty. How can you bring in more truths, more love, and more freedom and more beauty into this world through your personal Camelot, your personal co-created miracle? I know what this sounds like, guys. I am dead serious. If you want to learn how to systematically do this, there is a few days left for the energy course that is starting on Saturday and um, for those of you who would like to create this uh, co-create this as in form of a relationship you may want to check out my new love integrity course that I am doing together with Jeff Casper teaching how to build and rebuild a relationship based on truth and it's not that easy simple but not easy Right, guys, this is it. I love you. I'm going to see you again on Wednesday for the energy talk, yeah, analyzing and discussing January energies. Yeah, And if you're not part of my newsletter, you don't have this yet, but, uh, you know, sign up for my email list so you get the energy alignment. That's a 20-minute MP3 that you can listen to that allows your energies to better deal with these January energies because those are the ones I would like to discuss with you next Wednesday here in the Energy Talk Live at 11.30 a.m. Eastern Time. All the best to you. See you next week. Bye-bye.